Hello everyone and welcome to On The Spot STEM. Today we'll be tackling the gold problem barn painting. Now this problem states that Farmer John has a large farm with N barns, some of which are already painted and some are not painted. So we essentially see that the barn is just a graph. I drew out the sample case where there's paths between certain nodes. And he only has three paint colors to paint the barns. And he wants to paint them in such a way that no two adjacent barns are painted the same color. Now, it's worth to noting that the N barns do not form any cycles. This automatically should make us think tree, because the definition of tree is basically a graph that doesn't have any cycles. So, how many ways can Farmer John paint the uncolored barns? And we see that the number of valid ways to paint the barns are going to be printed modulo 10 to the 9 plus 7. So I don't think it's going to be possible to really simulate every single possible way to print the barn. This is going to be way too large because clearly it's going to be a lot larger than 10 to the 9 plus 7. So we have to find an easier way to do this. Now we see that the first n minus 1 lines tell us our graph. This is the sample case that I've already drawn. And the next K lines tell us which barn is already painted. In this case, we see that barn number four is already painted color three. So let's see why the answer is eight. Well, how many ways are there to print to paint barn one? Well, since this one is already painted the color three, barn one cannot take the color three because otherwise the two adjacent barns will be the same color. So there are two possible ways to paint barn one. Using the same logic on barns 2 and 3, we see that there are two ways to print barn 2 and two ways to print barn 3. Now, we use multiplication. We do 2 times 2 times 2 to get our final answer. And this is because for every possible way we can print barn 1 and for every possible way we can print bar paint barn 2, there are two ways we can paint barn 3. And there are essentially four ways to do this. This is a lot of math, but if you're familiar with permutations and combinatorics, then this should be very familiar to you. So we use the product of how many different ways there are to paint barn one, how times the number of ways there are to print barn two, plus times the number of ways there are to paint barn three. So essentially, if we have a function called paint, that gives us the number of ways we can paint a certain bar, then our answer will just be paint of V, and it's just gonna be the product of all possible Vs, from V equals zero to N. So we see that that's our answer, but clearly we're not processing all the constraints, but we haven't used the one bit of knowledge that we do know. The fact that this graph isn't just any graph, it's a tree. So what a tree means is there are no cycles. So that means, let's suppose this tree was a rooted tree, and let's say it was rooted at one. Well, the number of ways we can essentially color in this tree is the number of ways we can essentially color in all of the children of this root. That's the two, the three, and the four. And then we can essentially process every single possibility. This makes us think of a dynamic programming approach, where we, if we have a DP function, where we have a vertex V and then a color C, we need to process all of its children. So we process all of DP's children. And let's say its children are in the form V of I comma C. But we actually wouldn't be able to paint any of its children the color C, because if we are painting vertex V with the color C, we wouldn't actually paint vertex VI with the color C. We might paint it with anything that is not C. In this case, we can write that as maybe C plus 1 and plus DP. So obviously these colors are taken modulo 3, so if we were painting vertex V with the color 2, 
then the other possibilities are painting its children with either zero or one. And the reason we, but now we have processed each of its children, right? We've added the possibilities, but this is how many ways I can paint a single child of V. If I want to generate all the possible children and somehow basically get the total number of ways, I have to use a product. So I have to multiply all of these together. So now we have our DP function running where if we have a certain vertex V, we look at all of its children because this is a tree that's now rooted at vertex V. And we essentially look, okay, now we can color VI with either C plus one or C plus two. That's how many ways we can do that. And we'd see that that's two. Then we'd see vertex three, you can be colored with either C plus one or C plus two. Okay, sure, there's two different things we're considering. But now we look at vertex four. We've not considered what happens when a barn is already painted. Well, it sounds like it's a lot more complicated than it's gonna be, but it's really not. Because all we have to say is, if we are trying to paint a vertex V with a color that it isn't already, then that just means it's unpaintable. There are zero ways that we can paint vertex four with the color that is not three. So as long as we process the condition that as long as we're not painting a barn, a color that it shouldn't be, we should be fine. Now that we have a working DP function, let's actually look at a coding implementation of this. So I've set up the basics, the scanner, the print writer, N and K, and also the modulo, but now we have to create the graph. Now, a way we can create the graph is to create essentially an array list array or a, an array of array lists, which essentially stores each node and who they're connected to. And since it's gonna be a rooted tree, I'll call it tree. And we essentially wanna set tree to equal a new array list of size n. And we also wanna make it static because we're calling it in the main function. We also want to create our DP array. Now it's two dimensional because we're going to be storing a vertex V and what color we're painting it as. And I made it a long just because when we're dealing with all these big, big modular numbers, I like making everything long. It's just a preference of mine. And since colors are very small, we can set that as an integer array. And that's all we need to create. So now let's actually read in all our data. We have n minus one vertices, but we actually have to initialize our array list of array first by setting tree of i equal to a new array list. Now we actually have to read in the data. Don't forget there are n minus one connections, so don't get tripped up by that. And I like to zero index everything when they don't just because arrays are zero index, it's a really common thing to do that just helps set things straight. And also don't forget, if A and B are connected, not only is B connected to A, but A is also connected to B. So we have to add each vertex twice. Okay, now that we've created our tree, let's create our DP array. We know it's gonna be having a size of n for each node and three for each color. Remember with our DP array, we always have to initialize it to something that can essentially happen naturally through our calculations. So for my purposes, I always just like to fill it in with whatever is the maximum value. So I choose long dot max value because that should never occur in the DP array because we're always gonna be taking numbers less than whatever we're, the, our modulo is. So now we have to set up a few more things, beginning with our color. Our color is gonna be a new int array of size, essentially n for the n nodes, and we wanna store the colors. But one thing to note is we don't want things that are not colored at all to appear like they are colored. So how do we sort this out? Well, what I do is I fill the color array 
with essentially negative one. So if I come across a node that has a negative one coloring, that means it's not colored at all. Otherwise, I have to set up the color of whatever I read in to be equal to whatever it tells me the color is. And I zero index the color for a reason we'll get to later. Okay, now that we've created our arrays, it's time to start with our DP function. So it's gonna be a long, and I'm gonna call it memoize. It's gonna take in a parameter V for the vertex it's on and a color C for whatever we're coloring. We start off by if the if V of C have already been processed in our DP array, so if they're not equal to long.max value, then essentially why are we even processing it? Just exit out. So now what? Well, we need to process our other base case, which is what if the color of the node has already been set? Well, there's only one time where we actually care about the color being set, and that's if the color has been set to something and we're trying to color it something else. So if the color of V is not equal to negative one and the color of V is not equal to C, well, that means we just return zero. It's impossible for us to color a vertex with color zero if it's already colored color one. It's just impossible. So then if this is not the case, then we can start getting into our DP calculation. We set up a long placeholder and I set it to one because since we're using multiplication, the identity is one, not zero. If you use zero, bad things will happen. You'll just keep returning zero. Now we wanna process everything that V is connected to because we're thinking of this as a rooted tree at vertex V. So essentially we need to process all of its connections. Now, what do we do? Well, we set placeholder and then we multiply it by whatever memoize of V C plus one is. And then we also have to add, let's take it mod mod just to be safe. And we also have to add memoize of V of C plus two. And then we also have to take this mod mod. And at the end, we'll basically take it mod mod. But wait, remember, if we keep just adding one to C, we'll go from one to two to three to four to five to six to colors that just don't exist. So because we were able to zero index the color here, we can actually just take it mod three. This will allow us to generate every color option other than the one we are currently coloring it as. Then finally, after we're done with this, we set our DP array equal to whatever we have whatever placeholder is, and then we return dp of v of c. Easy enough. Oh, sorry. If also worth mentioning that should be a k, not a v, because we actually are setting it to the child of whatever v is. But there is a small catch. J because a is a connected to b, and b is connected to a, We'll essentially get infinite recursion by processing this. We'll go from A to B to A to B to A to B, etc. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we're not reprocessing the parent. So the way we do that is we essentially in this for loop, if K is equal to our parent, then we basically continue. Otherwise, V becomes the parent and V becomes the parent. This is really small but this is our entire DP function. Now all we have to do is print it out. So the way I like to print it out is essentially set the parent to negative one because we're starting our rooted tree at somewhere else without a parent. And the vertex I start at, it's irrelevant. It could be anything that's in range, but I choose zero just because zero is always going to be there no matter what test case they choose. So we also want to process every single color. So we want to be able to do memoize of that, memoize of that, and process all the colors. Don't forget though, that we need to take this modulo mod, because when we add numbers, we could go over. So we should always just err on the safer side and do this. So this is our function, and let's test to see if it actually works.
as you can see, this code worked flawlessly. Now, before you leave the video, I would like to mention that we're going to be trying something new where I'm going to be attaching the code to the description. So if you ever want to look at the code for reference, it'll be in the description. You can click on it and see all our code from now on. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned a little bit more.